um, Dr. Amina Charanya, who is uh, the program lead for the MA in Education and Technology program, um, to speak a little bit about the center and TIS. Yeah, very good morning to, to everyone. Uh, thanks for coming on a Saturday morning. Uh, we will start in one or two minutes. Um, and we, uh, yeah, hope uh, all of you uh, are doing fine today. And uh, so we have very basic information also uh, introducing uh, TIS and our center today. And then we will slowly move uh, towards the program. To start with, uh, I uh, understand uh, uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences will not need much introduction, uh, but it's uh, an institute which is uh, uh, established uh, right back in 1930s, 1936 by Sir Dorabji Tata and uh, starting with social work and social sciences and then uh, building into many other areas that you are all aware of. Uh, currently, we have um, uh, three campuses. Uh, it's uh, Mumbai uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, the main campus. Uh, we have Tuljapur, which is rural Maharashtra, as uh, the second campus. And we also have uh, Guwahati Assam as the third campus. Um, uh, if you go next. Uh, so uh, this MA Education and Technology program is housed in uh, Center of Excellence in Teacher Education. Uh, this center was established in TIS in the year 2015. And it started with a very large international uh, collaboration with Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Tata Trust uh, in the area of education technology. So uh, the uh, name many of you might be um, familiar with, it's called Clicks Connected Learning Initiative. Uh, this was a flagship program of the center and uh, uh, it was designed for scale and it reached uh, many, many uh, lakhs of students and teachers and uh, across many states. And uh, so the MA Education Technology Program, which just started last year, uh, has a lot of uh, backing in the field research and the field practice and the instructional design or what you call learning design these days and thorough research and practice and teacher professional development in the area of education technology. Some of uh, the flagship or the field projects are click school resources that we started in COVID-19, responding to a lot of uh, uh, teachers and government uh, organizations and their need for uh, uh, quality education uh, resources, it's where school was started. It still continues. IT was another uh, uh, rural uh, flagship program of CET uh, that looked at eight states uh, and mostly rural geographies. CL for STEM is an international program in uh, South Asia and African countries that we have right now. And Delta 21 is another education technology program, which is uh, situated in Mumbai and working very closely, uh, working within BMC or MCGM schools. Um, besides that, uh, the center also has short-term programs, which are uh, reflective teaching with ICT, which has a lot of subject pedagogies uh, and the role of education technology. Besides that, it has four education uh, certificate programs like uh, PGCC and CEPR. Uh, the teaching programs, uh, we will talk about it a little bit and then it has a lot of uh, national and international uh, collaborations. So our academic programs are weaved into this other um, uh, other uh, collaborations, field research and practice and also the corporate connections that we will talk about uh, in this presentation today. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so this is the program of studies in the center. Uh, we offer BA MED programs, which is an integrated BA MED for three years. Uh, we also have the lateral entry, uh, lateral entry MED programs for uh, the professionals who already have a BA degree. Then uh, we have MED education, um, which is uh, 
एम ए इन एजुकेशन विच इज ज्वाइंटली ऑफर्ड विथ हैदराबाद एंड मुंबई Uh, there's a typo. This MA education is not an online program. It is uh, a face-to-face -face program, and it is a two-year program. Uh, the last uh, bucket is where the MA education technology comes in. Uh, we uh, School of Education at TIS offers MA in Elementary Education, which is like a two years. a uh, blended program in education in elementary education and what we started just last year is ma in education and technology which is a one year program a uh, full time but can be completed in 2 to 3 years um, and that has a flexible delivery that we will talk about today we go to the next slide so in general why would uh, someone do a masters degree in education and technology at tis uh, certain things that we would like to highlight are uh, it's a premium institute with 60 plus multidisciplinary pg programs uh, and uh, we draw a lot from other programs uh, for example um, a school of labor management and studies at tis and uh, we developing ma education technology courses which looks at product management we also collaborated with other schools to design our programs to make it more holistic uh, topics like social marginalization in education also brings core uh, ma education knowledge and competences as well as some of the development studies content um as we have already discussed uh, the center has seven plus years of experience of core research practice and teacher professional development in education technology and it brings a very holistic perspective to education technology we are not uh, very limited to lo looking only at e learning or content development we also look at policy we also look at leadership we also look at product management so it's a holistic program and students get uh, different aspects of education technology and towards the end the students based on their interest uh, kind of select their capstone project which is more like a specialization in what they are interested some students uh, specialize in creating an artifact and using design and learning principles there some look at policy as their area and uh, uh concentrate on that area so it depends on the specialization that students build by taking holistic courses and then move towards more to, uh, towards what they really want uh based on their career objectives uh so it also brings the aspect of social equity inclusion agencies uh agency and ethical consideration agency in the sense uh uh the teacher agency or the autonomy and the confidence and the learner agency which is very important where we also talk about constructivist teaching and learning with technology um yeah uh, we can move to the next slide now so this slide is very very bleak so sorry for that uh, but this we don't need to discuss this but this is kind of an uh, uh spanned out uh, this is kind of an umbrella which shows the various programs that the center is doing only in education technology at this point and it draws from uh this variety of projects and uh, teacher professional development at the center we can go to the next slide yeah this also maps to the uh, number of state engagements that we have in india when it comes to education technology partnerships and also uh, uh, currently uh, partnerships with south asia and african countries uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, stem programs and teacher professional development and developing open educational resources in those countries uh, so it brings a lot of international uh, perspective uh, which also brings as case studies within the program these are some of the awards that the center has received in the area of education technology uh, since 2017 yeah please keep going uh, now coming specifically to ma in education and technology program which was launched in june uh, 2023 we are right now 
working uh, with our first cohort and uh, the admission that we are going to talk about today is for the batch 2024, 2024-2025. Uh, uh, so this uh, is a flexible program. It has uh, uh, it has 42 credits. So uh, mostly the two-year uh, master's programs have 80 plus credits. But this program, as per the new guidelines of NEP, is a one year with 42 credits. Uh, and it has a flexible delivery, which means that uh, you will be taking online classes uh, 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 depending on whether you uh, sign up for part-time or full-time. Uh, uh, that will determine how many classes you will be attending online. We have classes only in the evenings because it's more it's mostly geared towards working professionals. In the entire program, that is if you complete the program in two years, three years, or uh, we would suggest not to extend three years, uh, you will have to spend at least 10 weeks uh, on campus. So it could be, say, two weeks a semester on campus, uh, depending on how many years you decide you want to complete the program. Um, yeah, we can go to the next uh, slide. Yeah, so the overall aim of the program is to the overall aim of the program is to build critical knowledge and pedagogies, equitable and sustainable perspectives and practice in the area of education technology. Also encompassing uh, research and practice-based knowledge about contemporary issues. I mean, technology is ever changing as you all know, and how does it impact the area of education and what are the contemporary issues, challenges, best practices, uh, our connections and collaborations with international research and academic bodies help us to basically bring a very uh, new and trendy knowledge into this program, which gets discussed. So unlike uh, most of our classes do not use a purely lecture base, but it's mostly uh, looking at discussion based and uh, practice based assignments are also very practice based um, and bringing and allowing the learners to bring their own context where they are working or they would like to work in the future and uh, making it more authentic by connecting theory with practice in our assignments. So that's very much even part of our aim and objectives um, to make your degree more transferable. Uh, after you graduate into different areas that you choose and keep evolving throughout your lifespan. We uh, call this program, I mean, uh, learning with the best, uh, especially because uh, uh, this program is taught by the center and other school of education uh, faculty, but we invite a lot of industry uh, leaders also to teach, uh, for example, uh, topics like computational thinking, product management, uh, uh, you know, policy in education technology internationally. We bring uh, even industry or other uh, faculty members in different universities, even internationally, to collaborate and teach this program. Um, yeah, I've already talked about the capstone project. Uh, we can keep going, Uchita. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll invite Uchita, who's also the coordinator for this program, uh, to talk a little bit about the course structure. Over to you, Uchita. Thank you. Um, so through the course of all the 42 credits that um, are part of this program, we've divided the courses into multiple different buckets. Um, we do about 12 credits of education core courses to bring in the educational theoretical perspective. Um, then we have about 16 credits of education technology core courses that come from various different domains in the field of education um, technology, right from um, learning design and teaching with technology to aspects like uh, management using in education technology and policy. Um, each uh, learner in this program selects six credits from a bucket of elective courses based on uh, what their interests are. The capstone project 
um, accounts for about six credits throughout the course of the program. Um, and a very unique feature of the program is two credits go towards seminars, which are conducted on a bi-monthly basis. Um, so looking at uh, a breakup of what kind of courses fall into each bucket, um, I'll just give you a minute to look at the kind of courses that are being offered. So talking about the two credit seminars, under this seminar series, we have been conducting, um, uh, we have been inviting a lot of industry experts and expert academics from universities like MIT, Open University UK, we've had speakers come in from um, IIT Bombay. And the whole purpose of this seminar is to widen the perspective and provide a platform for um, the learners in this program to engage with these industry experts and have um, a more detailed understanding of what is happening in different uh, domains in the field of education technology. Um, I think we've already uh, spoken about the Capstone project, but here's a little more um, information. The project can either be something that follows a research uh, track or something that follows a design track based on what interests uh, the learner. So here are just a few more partners that we uh, that have worked with us not just for the seminars, but also for developing the course. And uh, they do come in as guest speakers in different uh, courses that are being offered. Um, so when talking about what comes after a program like this, it definitely um, opens up doors in a lot of different aspects of the education technology field, um, since the program is quite diverse and looks at many different domains. Uh, but the five ones that we've identified where there can be a significant impact after this program is teaching and learning, uh, product uh, management, any pro management based work in the field of education technology, instructional design research, of course. Um, and any kind of education and technology startup work. So while this program does have the distance learning um, aspect, um, everyone enrolled in this program gets all the same uh, benefits that any regular TIS student uh, would get. There is a very um, strong community of students and practitioners that you will get to engage with on a regular basis. Um, there will be a lot of synchronous sessions as well being conducted in the form of workshops, seminars that you can participate in and learn from different experts in the field. Um, we do have a wide range of resources in terms of um, access to the TIS library. So um, these are all uh, benefits that you can take advantage of once you're enrolled in the program. Um, so just taking a minute to talk about who can enroll for the program, since it is designed to be a one-year uh, full-time program, uh, you need to have either a four-year undergraduate degree um, or any other undergraduate degree in addition to a master's degree to be able to apply um, for the program. So uh, moving on to the admissions process. Yeah, we can take a few questions, Uchita, and then move to CUET. Yeah. Okay. So maybe if you can go back to the earlier slide. Maybe we can pause here and take a few questions, and then we can move to the admission process.
So please feel free to unmute your mic or put your question in the chat box. Hello. Sure, Neha. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to ask that how beneficial it's going to be for the instructional designers who are already working in industry in edtech. Mm -hmm. So what learning curve is going to be for them uh, through this course or after this? I mean, how, how the things are going to change? I mean, and how beneficial this is going to be for them? Mm -hmm. So I think there are two ways. One is uh, a more in terms of knowledge and uh, practice and the other is more you're looking at the career progression, right? These are the two things you are asking. Yeah, so for learning uh, learning design, see what we have seen even with our current, uh, current uh, cohort, a lot of people who are in instructional design, they either have, uh, mostly they have education background or they are teachers or they are coming from technology background or they are coming from advertising background, maybe English language background. This program basically gives them a bridge or a blend, uh, which we call education technology. So we have courses uh, which gives deeper understanding on uh, the concept of learning, uh, what is learning, uh, how learning takes place, which comes from the education core domain taught by an education core uh, faculty. And then building on this course, we also have very, very basics of learning design. And uh, it allows uh, hands-on uh, designing, means there, there, there are one or two uh, instructional designers in the current cohort who have been designing based on your prior experience of the subject matter, but not necessarily they had uh, some kind of a degree or uh, they had some kind of uh, practice or knowledge which is deep in learning and learning design and with technology. So this course, uh, if you go back to uh, Uchita on the courses, these are the courses which basically gives a deeper understanding of education, learning, and learning design. And then it also gives some uh, exposure to product management, which instructional designers or learning designers do not do. But it also gives, when you create an artifact or design, how would you basically convert this into a product? That doesn't mean it will make you an expert in product, but it will give you an exposure to the process of product designing and disseminating a product. With that, it also, where, it, where you disseminate your product, what is a school? What is a curriculum? How do you disseminate? Or what is um, an adult learning or andro androgogy product? So it gives you a holistic perspective, not only on instructional design, but also the ecosystem of entire education technology where the learning design is used and percolated or disseminated. So I would say that's the how the entire ecosystem gets, in fact, also understanding what are the different policies in education and education technology, where your products and your artifacts and learning design get situated. What impacts your learning design? It's not just a direct beneficiary, but it's the entire ecosystem of education in the country. What are the international standards of technology in education? You know, so this overall perspective, which goes into depth of understanding education technology landscape in which learning design is just one component. So I would stop here. That is one thing. The career progression, I think, uh, is something which, uh, you know, this program doesn't tell you that if you are a learning designer and if you are a, learn a junior learning designer, uh, you will become a senior learner. It doesn't promise that kind of a career progression. It's, I think, basically more left to what you take away and how this degree basically makes you an expert in what you are doing and you create your own horizontal career progression. I think that is something any master's program coming from um, uh, larger universities will give that kind of a transference effect. But it won't tell you from junior you become a senior. You know, it's not so direct. 
but it's more the transferability of knowledge, practice and competence that you take with you, which will allow you to then transfer into different areas. So sorry for a very long answer, uh, but uh, hope it answers to some extent what you were asking. Yeah, 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 definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. The other question was on the capstone uh, that someone was asking, uh, Shubham. Yeah, so uh, Uchita, if you can go back to the capstone project. So usually the master's degree have a very traditional research dissertation. Uh, we are not uh, offering a research dissertation, but it's some kind of a mini uh, research design and little bit of research experience. It's not that traditional dissertation. So for example, in capstone project, uh, um, you know, students have opted, like we have one, uh, for example, one student uh, uh, currently uh, who is teaching computational thinking uh, uh, in an international school right now. So she's a teacher. And in her capstone project, uh, what she has selected is that she would like to compare two different pedagogies of teaching uh, artificial intelligence. So she has created a very um, traditional method of lesson plan of teaching of 15 students in her class and a very constructivist way of teaching AI and problem-based learning with technology. And then she's has made these modules for her uh, st uh, students. She has designed these modules using learning design principles. And then she will uh, experiment and see what is the difference when she teaches with, a, uh, with pedagogy one, which she's calling a black box of AI uh, pedagogy and pedagogy two, which is more collaborative and out of the box pedagogy. And how do students uh, learn very differently on indicators that she's creating. For example, are students collaborating differently? Are they doing 21st century uh, differently? Are they learning AI very differently? What is the difference? And what does it take to uh, for the entire process? So that is one example. I think second example, we have a very different uh, kind of a student uh, who's working in learning design in an HR setting. So she is creating an artifact a module for uh, adults uh, on uh, soft skills uh, for uh, that kind of a context. And she's using design-based principles for that. We have a student who's actually a faculty in the college, uh, in the University of Education, and his interest is special education. So he is looking at little bit of pure research in uh, special education and looking at assisted technology. So. It depends on your interest and based on what you have uh, gained in the courses, then the students make their own. And what we do is we pair them with a field mentor and we pair them with a faculty mentor so that they get um, scaffolding from two different kinds of mentors. And sometimes these mentors, at least the field mentor is someone that the student can also bring or otherwise we associate them with a field mentor and a faculty mentor. Uh, so this is something which does not start at the end. It starts from right from the first semester that we uh, start with workshops talking about what capstone, what are the different design principles, what are the ethical considerations in mini research, uh, how do you do the research. So it's scaffolds and then the students write a proposal, they submit a proposal, their guide reviews it, they make presentations. When they have an okay about conducting a capstone, then they enter the field in the second semester. I'll stop here. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I have to look at other questions. Uh, so the third question is, I'm working as a pre-primary teacher. Okay, you have uh, not done B it. Will it still be beneficial to the course? And do you provide placements and completion of the course? Yeah. So pre-primary... Um, uh, education, uh, you can still apply for the program, but you need to have, because it's only, the coursework is only for one year, which is only 42 credits. As per the UGC regulation, you will need uh, a three-year bachelor degree plus master's degree, or you already have a four years of bachelor's degree. 
so that is the criteria but uh, i have done de bachelor's in engineering oh then, then it's fine right. yeah so it's, you have already have a four year of undergraduate degree and i was working yeah. with the industry for seven years but because i took a break and then i applied for this because i wanted to be occupied so i joined as a pre primary teacher but now okay. i am looking for the higher so yeah so it definitely qualifies you for uh, uh, applying uh, because you already have a four year undergraduate degree so uh, you can go ahead and apply uh, for this uh, what are your interest in uh, this is, is uh, are your interest still a pre primary or you are open to different interests yes i am open to different interests okay. but uh, because since it is a very beginning for me in the education industry so i am looking for you know more information and where should i go in this direction because it's just the beginning for me it's just pre primary because i haven't had any mm -hmm. uh, other experience in education earlier now whether to okay. go for I think that you also provide three years integrated course in B.Ed and M.Ed. B.Ed M.Ed integrated course. That's so a professional is... teacher certification program. So B.Ed oh, M.Ed yes. is uh, if you want to become a teacher, uh, so you need a B.Ed degree for that. So instead, if I opt for this course, where will this course take me? Yeah, that's my because yeah. the. the description that has been provided right now i could understand and gain you know little bit of knowledge from that but not on the broader sure, side sure sure so uh, uchita if you go back on the courses yeah then we'll come to the career prospects so education so even if you do not have education background and you come from a technology background you will be given these education courses in first and second semester both or if you do part time it will be in the second year whenever you choose to take it so uh, so we have a lot of students right now who do not have education background they come from technology backgrounds and they do these courses uh, with us so key ideas and concepts in education uh, learners and learning from mostly the uh, education psychology part of it policy uh, social marginality and curriculum school and teachers these are the core courses compulsory courses so this is a good bridge for those who do not have education background these courses will give you enough to understand education area as well and at the same time you will take education technology courses uh, which builds on some of these courses or are not necessarily all build on education courses it will have its own uh, curriculum which will give you enough on education and technology and then bridge it um so uh, as far as uh, you want to move into education as an area and you already have a technology undergraduate degree that gives you a good blend for this program so uh, maybe uh, can you go to the career slide uchita see these are the certain careers that we have talked out so uh, these are the things that you can look at education technology specialist a learning design specialist uh, which a lot of education technology companies have uh, and they hire learning designers who basically uh, design uh, education technology content online content or these are games or these are uh, maybe educational resources like very big come i don't want to name companies but many are companies and many are working uh, in organizations which are not for profit but they are also making education resources then uh, the role of product manager how to hand how to design and uh, make a product and then how to disseminate that product how to do a need analysis what to make for whom and uh, how should your product be packaged for a certain kind of audience uh instructional designer i have already talked about also uh it could also take uh, someone to a leadership position in a school or a higher education like there are a lot of private universities also these days or also in uh, other countries where they look at faculty mentors that means people who come with technology proficiencies and also who are able to do learning design and also teacher professional development for faculty of their universities or colleges so then they become like the edtech uh, leader or the edtech mentor in those universities international schools also have education technology specialist uh, so that role is also open 
a, a few of our students also uh, are doing this program because they do not have education background and uh, they are very keen to get into research. So a lot of research positions uh, which looks at impact assessment, assessing education technology programs, uh, because there is a lot of investment, uh, even even uh, whatever happened after COVID, even though investment have gone little down from what they had peaked in a COVID period, a lot of governments and a lot of uh, companies are looking at people who can evaluate and do impact assessment of their products and large education programs. So that's what also this program gives you because it gives you first-hand experience because we work with a lot of uh, impact assessments of education technology tools and programs. And we bring this in the assignments of the, we want our students, we ask them to make frameworks and evaluate education technology programs. So that gives you that competency. Plus uh, a few uh, like to go for PhD research. So this program gives you enough of education and education technology as a domain. And then it gives you a good backup to then apply for PhD uh, programs. Uh, uh, our department also has uh, an edu uh, uh, education uh, PhD program. Uh, so that is also another window. Entrepreneurship, sustainable. Uh, so maybe industry leaders or startup leaders who uh, come from tech backgrounds or come from education backgrounds and they have already started a product um, and they are leaders in their uh, in what they are making, but they do not have in-depth understanding of education technology as an academic area. So these are some of the career prospects that one can look at. Uh, also, publishing companies uh, uh, could be one of the areas uh, where you can look at. AI is coming very, very fast and it's already there. Uh, and it could also uh, match someone who's looking at instructional or learning design and integration of AI into different uh, uh, settings, K-12 settings or higher education settings could also be one of the very interesting project that has come to us recently is... Uh, uh, making an edtech uh, learning management, uh, learn making a learning management system for seniors. You know, so we are not there, but it could be transferable. The learning design principles could be transferable for other uh, uh, settings uh, like these. Yeah, I'll stop here. Thank you. Sir. Uh, in this course, available for international. Yes, so international students. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. This course is available and uh, the admission process for international will start only when we uh, complete, uh, maybe in February. So it will be announced sometime in February, March. The international students do not go through the regular uh, CUET, which is a central university exam entrance. They do not go through this. They go through a uh, very local, whatever the TIS uh, uh, they will go through another test that this gives, but not the central exam. So maybe we will do another seminar in the month of February for international students uh, and targeting them. Yeah. So whether they, uh, I think uh, we will have a better flexible option. Maybe they can come on campus for fewer days than the uh, national students. Uh, and if uh, we have another uh, college, not college, but uh, another unit in TIS which looks at international students. And with them, we make it flexible uh, for international students uh, to attend not only our programs, but many programs on TIS. But we will start this uh, seminar for international students a little later in February, once we close with the national students. Yeah, so another question need... Uh, I'm working full time so you can elaborate more. How do we attend the online? So we really uh, uh, encourage those who are working full time to not go for a full time program. It will be very difficult to manage this full time program with your full time work. It's best that you opt for part time. That means uh, you will have a choice of registering for very few credits per semester. That means you take, for example, only two courses per uh, term. That means four courses in a semester. That means in one week, you will be attending only two online classes and our classes are only uh, in the evening. 
the part time students will also not complete 10 weeks of program in one year they will have two to three years of time to come and complete their 10 weeks on campus so maybe you will come only for a week uh, or maybe over the year you will only come two to three weeks in a year uh, you know so maybe it will be one whole week you come you go back then again after four months you come one week and then you go back so it will be flexible based on how many credits you sign up so we out of uh, we uh, right now out of the batch we have about 80 percent are working full time and they are managing uh, and based on this year's experience we would like to say do not go for a full time program if you are working full time go for a part time program and we will give you flexibility of uh, of how many weeks you can come on campus yeah so that is taken care of uh, if there are any more questions on flexible delivery we can take right now Okay, sure. So then we can pause here and I would like to hand over to uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Anusha Ramanathan. Alka, you have a question. Anusha, uh, maybe yeah, I'll be, ask I'm question around. from Alka. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Go now. ahead. Alka, you have a question or you've already asked? Um, I have already asked, but just wanted to confirm. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Alka from Nepal. Uh, and I really wanted to join a master's program for uh, in technology, education technology, uh, because I work in education technology. So I really look forward to for this course. I, I was just wondering, since I'm a working person as well and internationally, so traveling uh, back and forth sometimes might not be feasible all the time. So I was just looking forward whether the course will be available distance mode or online mode. So wondering if that will be anytime soon, if those kinds of available or flexibility will be available or not. Yeah, so Alka, uh, we uh, have classes online and uh, for a few weeks, the students come on campus. But for international students, uh, we will come up and find an option for you. Maybe we have your email ID. We will uh, call you back for international seminar where we will be able to uh, discuss better option for international students because definitely international students cannot come on campus for 10 weeks. So uh, we will come back on uh, some kind of a mitigation of this 10 weeks face to face for international students and find uh, some kind of a flexible option for this Alka. So we will write you back. Uh, we have your email address or you can leave your email address today. And we will do a separate seminar uh, for international. But thank you so much for coming. And thank you for your interest in this program. We will definitely keep in touch with you, Alka. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, also, the second session, I mean, the uh, next uh, part of this uh, session is going to be how to apply for central university exam and that is not applicable to international students international students will not go through cuet they will go through a very different process that we will come up in february because there is enough time for international students uh, uh, but time is running out for the uh, national students for um, applying for this exam yeah Sure, Anusha, over to you. We can take more questions even at the end if you have. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Amina. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to um, this. I hope that we can actually say welcome to this in person um, with many of you. Uh, so this is basically something that's applicable to all the education programs in this. Uh, that we have for uh, both the MA Education and Technology, the MA Education and the BA Demand in the course. And <clears throat> I'm going to quickly take you through some of these and some of this because it's also available on the website, right? So what you have is if you just search for TIS plus PGCUET, and please note that those who are new to this entire admission process or 
have, you know, uh, had a break in their work, please note that CUET is of two types. One is for the undergraduate, uh, for the BA uh, programs and the BSc and BCom programs and engineering, etc., which also has the IITG and so on. But the CUET is for the undergraduate and then there is a PG, which is for the postgraduate, and you would be applying for the postgraduate test for CUET uh, for these programs that we are offering. Uh, you can find a lot of information about the uh, PGCUET on the site, as I have given you the link. Uh, but you can also see quite a bit on the Samarth uh, NTA site as well. And so I thought I'll just share the screen a bit for you to know the kind of, you know, what you could get in terms of the information about the exam, what kinds of instructions are there. All of it is already available to a lot of you on the site. And I'm happy to take more questions as you come along, but just to note that this is all available online as well. Uh, the TIS admissions timeline, which has also been yeah. given on our site. And if, as I said, if you just type TIS plus PG, CUET, you will be able to see all of this. Uh, you come to the landing page and you're able to see some of the links and then you can uh, definitely look through the timelines. You have time till 24th January 2024 and uh, you will uh, be able to upload and uh, you know register uh, for it given on that link. And then the last date for transaction would be by 25th. But I would advise given the kind of high volume of internet flexibility and server allowances throughout. This is centrally done. This is not a TIS. Uh, it would be advisable to have scheduled your registration with some timeline and, and you know, um, some kind of an element that you would be able to take for backup time, right? So all of these details are given your city, et cetera, you will be able to choose. It's a very simple registration process. It doesn't require too much. Uh, it will just ask for details such as your own address. Uh, make sure that you don't autofill addresses. Uh, make sure that your address that you're filling in is something about the city that you would be able to take the exam in. So you have a preference, and this is something that is often done. You have a preference city and then you have your postal correspondence city. And in case your preference city is not given, then they automatically choose your postal correspondence city. So you may want to see how you are uh, choosing and enrolling in those elements. But this is where the overall it is. It's quite simple, very uh, click, click, click based and entering uh, details. Uh, you will be given all these intimations. There will be emails as well sent out once you register. Uh, as I said, registration site, registration site, NTA site on the summer, ac.in for PGCUET. And uh, all that you need to do is also be able to pay and you have all options, credit card, UPI, etc. for the payment. The exam overall is a exam which requires you to have a number of questions, about 75 questions. It's an exam for one hour, 45 minutes, but you will be expected to come to the hall prior. And it generally takes place in three shifts, but you would uh, you would be even able to choose your shift provided you have been well in time to register. Uh, the uh, entire gamut is that of the 75 marks, uh, it is actually 75 questions, and then each correct answer gets four marks, and each incorrect answer, and uh, gets a negative mark, right? Negative one. So it's a one fourth negative for every answer. And unattempted questions do not get any negative marks. They don't, uh, are not penalized. The medium is generally English and Hindi. It is bilingual. And the papers that you have for uh, MA Education and Technology is also going to be available in English and Hindi. But we would recommend that you choose the English option. Please note that these courses are offered in English. Though we do try and accommodate bilingualism as much as possible, other languages, but primarily our medium of instruction is English. The pattern and syllabus for the paper is overall very simple. It's general awareness. Uh, and the topics are on language. Uh, what you have is with language, 
uh, you will have Hindi questions as well. You do not have to attempt the Hindi comprehension questions. You have to just attempt the English section. So there is something on language where because it is all over the country, there may be people who may choose another language and that's the Hindi medium instruction. So therefore that. But you have to just choose English. What kinds of questions you get? There are some of them very simple. If you have done your 10th and 12th pass, you should be able to take these questions. They are reading comprehension questions based on a passage of about, some passages are about 250 to 350 words. Some passages are about 500 words. And there are some comprehension questions, factual comprehension and inferential on it. Synonyms, antonyms. Choose the odd one out. Those kinds of questions that you've seen any of your testing question papers that you are applying for come out here also. General knowledge or awareness is another set of questions that you get. You would have questions which are based on current topics, but also on some elements such as um, which is the um, which is the state which has the maximum number of borders with internal states in India. Uh, and so on. And they will give you multiple choice questions. So some of it is more your Malayalam Manorama kind of GK questions that you would have to answer. Uh, but there are many on schemes and policies which have recently come out or on your sports and awareness uh, of sports leaders and captains and films uh, which have won or have been nominated for Oscars and so on. So that's the general awareness kind of question. You do get questions on computer basics, um, very simple questions, largely which are based on, say, web browsers, which of the following may not be a web browser, for instance. And there may be questions such as Canva, uh, Opera, uh, Firefox, and uh, Internet Explorer. And so then Canva is not a web browser. So those kinds of questions which are Extremely basic, ideally should be done through general knowledge and a couple of questions which will be tricky and difficult, of course, but many of them are something that most anyone could do. It's very basic superficial knowledge of if you know working computers, you should be able to handle it. Um, what you have is mathematical reasoning questions. Uh, for those who are shun, who shun mathematics, please note that you don't have to be bad it. The questions are focused on something that is mostly pitched by the 10th standard syllabus and a few, very few questions at 11th or 12th. Very few means one, one or two questions maximum. Most of it is something that you have done through your school. For instance, there may be a question on simple interest or a very popular question across all uh, exams, which is, you know, um, in year 1911, um, this particular day was a Wednesday in the year 2011, which, um, what would this um, date be on, you know, September 1, which day would it be on? And you will have to answer which day, right? That's the kind of questions you get. These are very popular ones that you generally uh, do have, or simple interest, calculate the simple interest on this person, uh, for this person who has to pay money, or the person is walking uh, eight kilometers to the east and then took a right and walked four kilometers. Now we'll calculate the shortest distance. So simple ones. Uh, logical reasoning is both English and math. Uh, logical reasoning has questions such as assumptions. If you have done critical reasoning for GMAT or anything of that sort, you would find a few, many of that repeated in the logical questions. The logical reasoning section has some spatial questions, um, very few, more of the um, uh, questions which talk about what would be the assumption made or what is an inference you can draw from this or, um, you know, um, which would be the next logical step? Questions which are focused on logical thinking, uh, data analysis sets which come in. So they're very few, simple, basically more pitched at 10th standard level. But yes, you need to prepare because the number of questions are, uh, as pointed out, it's one hour uh, and 105 minutes actually. Yeah, one hour, 45 minutes in a sense. And you would have to be able to attempt 75 questions. So you don't really get um, you, an entire gamut of more than, I mean, a minute and a half is the maximum you're getting per question. So 
that's the overview of CUET. If you have any questions, please do ask and I would be happy to answer. There are different shift timings and uh, you do get question papers and sample papers online. Uh, I would recommend that if you are trying to prepare for the exam, that you do familiarize yourself well with the PU, CVT PG syllabus paper exam pattern, create a kind of a study, study schedule um, to get yourself familiarized with co concepts, with learning, with also marking and practice solving previous year's papers. Uh, generally try and see which sections you may be good at since there is no penalty on unattempted questions, strat strategize, um, but also learn not only to skip, but to come back to the question, uh, be you know, smart about it. So those would be the key factors. Yeah, if there are, as I said, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. So Anusha, thank you so much. Uh, can we go on the overall pr admission process that slide of yours? Yeah. The uh, This is what is available on the TIS website. Uh, what I'm showing you is nothing uh, much different. Uh, so by 26th, 24th January, uh, admissions are ongoing right now. So by, by 24th January, we should be able to, you should have submitted your application. Uh, if there is a payment delay, then you have time up one more day after 25th January. 25th January, please note, is a Thursday. And then if there is any corrections, then they allow you up till the Tuesday of the week. Sorry, the, yeah, Tuesday of the week. 26, 27, 28, 29th is Monday. So Monday of the following week. And then you have uh, the, you know, the process in terms of the city intimation where you would be having, downloading the website from the website, the admit cards. All of these are very clearly given in terms of timelines. Some of these timelines will get updated. For instance, the seat allocation and where, when will the timing of the exams be specifically? Typically, they have been, uh, you know, uh, focused on these kinds of tif shift timings, uh, 9 to 10.45, 12.45 to 2.30, and 4.30 to 6.15. But there may be a few change. This was last year's and not this year's. So these kinds of shifts that you have will be announced. And then uh, you would have had a choice chance to also perhaps select your preference but you may not be given that but all of this will be announced closer to 7th march and then some of the other elements of seat allocation etc will be after the results are declared yeah thank you so much anusha uh, we can have questions so uh, do we have questions for anusha uh, so this Masters of Education and Technology, Masters of Arts in Education and Technology will require you to first take this general test, which is the central university uh, test by, uh, which is a central test. Uh, there is no TISNET test anymore, but you have to take this general test. So the uh, registration process for this test is closing. What Anusha is saying is on 24th of January. So once you register, then you take the test in March and uh, the TIS registration process is a separate process which is not yet announced. It will soon get announced, uh, but you have to first register for this test because all master's program at TIS require you to take the CUET exam. So this is very important. If you're planning to apply for any of the TIS programs, not only this, you have to first register for this central university test. For this program, what Anusha was explaining, for this program, there is CPQ11, which is a general uh, test that you have to take. There is no subject specific test for this master's program. You just have to take this CPQ11, sorry, COQP11 test, which is a general test. And please note, uh, I 
I just thought I will add to the point uh, that Amina has made that through this paper, there are multiple other courses that are available to you from at both TIS and otherwise. So it is a central exam that whichever universities uh, accept this paper will be eligible. So all the programs of education at TIS uh, allow you to take uh, CUET paper and uh, COP, QP level. And this is the paper that you'll be applying. So maximum number of our courses are actually applicable through this. So keep that in mind as you're preparing. Sure, thank you so much. Any questions uh, for the admission process? Matthew has just come in. Okay, the results of this test are valid for a year. Anusha? Of this test are not valid for a year. The results of the test are valid for, I mean, when you say a year, for this academic year. Yes, but the academic year begins the moment that the admission process begins, right? So from, it is valid till September, December of this 2024, uh, as long as the uh, cycle of this is taken. So if you are going to apply, take and get admission in this round, and then you are applying for the next academic year, then it is not valid. You will have to take the test again. Does that answer your question, Shreya? Uh, sorry, Shreya, uh, oh, sorry, right. that was Mridan. Shreya, there is no age limit for the PGCUET test per se. It is just about how you are able to apply and, uh, you know, come in. But there is at every different institute, there is an age limit or there's a preference, uh, either minimum age or maximum age, etc. That you will have to check at different sites. I'm giving you beyond what this is doing. But at this, again, there is no specific age limit that we have. Um, for the course uh, enrollment. This is continuing, this is post-graduation. So you're welcome to join us um, whenever you think that you need to improve your um, credentials. Yeah. Yeah, mostly we have working professionals. Uh, so uh, they are in their 30s, 40s, or sometimes 50s also. So age, I think even if, uh, so age is not a bar for this program. Yeah. Uh, we did have one student uh, who was, uh, you know, almost retiring, actually had retired from a central government university at 58 and was in TIS uh, to study further for another course. But yeah, we have those. So, uh, so Matthew, what we can do is uh, we will take your email address now and uh, maybe let you know uh, to register for our next session. Is that okay? Because we are almost done with the session. Uh, yeah. Can you just put your email address just to be on the safe side and we will send you a direct email to register for our next session. Uh, just a question. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, just a question. Uh, how did you know about this seminar? Can you all... Please put it in the chat. That will be very, very important, uh, very, very useful for us. Okay, Instagram, LinkedIn. Okay. Sure, thank you so much. We will uh, stay back if there are more questions. Uh, but all the best, uh, please uh, write to us. Uh, Uchita, can we give them our direct email address to write for any queries? If you have any other queries, please write to us. I'm putting the uh, address in the chat box. With this, uh, thank you so much, Anusha. And thank you so much, Uchita. With this, we will close our session for today. Uh, we will announce uh, soon. I think uh, every Saturday is what we have thought the same time till uh, 20th or 24th of uh, January. We will continue MA EdTech. So if you have other colleagues or if you have other uh, or if you would like to come back and ask more questions, please feel free to register and come back. Um, thank you so much. Thanks and all the best. Yeah. Good day. Thank you.
थैंक यू मैम इट वॉज रियली हेल्पफुल्योर थैंक